We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of the things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the cries of all who call out and restore us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and defame you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, today I'm concluding a three-part mini-series of three sermons that have followed much of the same theme as we encounter here on All Saints Sunday our lessons last week for Reformation Sunday, and even the week before that, when the Gospel text told the story of the tax collector and the Pharisee and their very approach to God. The common thread between these has been looking at our Christian identity. In other words, how we see ourselves, how we see others, and how we see God all wrapped around how God sees us and the gifts and talents that our Creator has bestowed on us. How then do we wrestle with our self-identity as imperfect practitioners of the Christian faith? Well, today, of course, is a special Sunday in the church year that comes each year on the first Sunday in November, All Saints Sunday. It is celebrated like this because it is the closest to the actual date of All Saints Day, which each year is November 1st. The immediate day before, October 31st, of course, is Halloween. So do not let anyone tell you that Halloween is not a Christian holiday. All Hallows' Eve is named that way because it happens right before All Saints Day when we remember the dead. It all kinds, kind of bugs me that some Christian organizations do not recognize Halloween. The preschool where my son Theo goes always sends a note home as a reminder that you do not celebrate Halloween at school there because it is not a Christian holiday. My first reaction is to want to go seek and hunt someone down and explain to them basic religious history. In part, Halloween was created by Christian believers for the purpose to laugh at death that doesn't get the last word, 
Thus, those tombs, cemeteries, and ghosts, and all as we go on with all that. I'm not saying that some of it has gotten a little, not gotten a little carried away, but the origins of Halloween happen because of Christianity, not in opposition to it. All Saints Day was such a popular Christian celebration in historic times that it was one of the reasons that Martin Luther chose to nail his 95 Theses to the church on the day before that church service of All Saints because he knew most people would be coming to church the next day. This is why we celebrate Reformation Day on October 31st and Reformation Sunday on the last Sunday of October each year. Arthur Barbara Brown Taylor once put it this way, if Halloween is mask on day, then All Saints is mask off day. When we stop to remember just how many people are beloved of God, those we suspect and those we did not. Those we can name and those we cannot. Those who left their marks on this world and those who vanished without a trace. First century martyrs, second grade teachers, saints whose graves we tend to, and those who we know no more about than the pile of stones all but lost in the woods. I really like that mask on and mask off description because in many ways it is telling of our lives. We know that God forever sees us as created children of this universe. God knows our identity of who we are and whose we are. And it's on this day that we most often remember that all of us are both saint and sinner. Part of living the life of the authentic faith and the genuine journey is revealing our true selves, not only to our own selves, but owning it up also to God, and even at times to other human beings. Part of living with other Christians, whether it's in our own household, workplace, neighborhood, and even our church family, is admitting and recognizing that we wear not only Halloween mask one day of the year, but we often wear self-designed masks as well as other label identities that have been thrust upon us all the time. Whether that means we are known only for what we can do, like an athlete or performer, just by our gifts, like we've been talking about in the Disney movie Encanto, how it is portrayed, or even if we are sometimes remembered for the mistake we made, whether that was large or small, and it's so easy to characterize others with this one-size-fits-all label. Then, of course, there are the labels that society as a whole has often put on others who are different from us, most often as a means of gaining power or trying to get an advantage over someone. All Saints Sunday is a time which remember both the living and the dead. For those who have died in the faith ahead of us, doesn't mean that those individuals were perfect by any means, even as we call them Christians, and they strove to live the Christian life. Even though we now consider them in God's full embrace, we know that all of them had shortcomings. All of them had moments in which the sin outshined the saint part of their lives. But those things did not disqualify them from God's amazing grace. Likewise, we among the living also exude both types of saint and sinner in our lives. Our spiritual well-being, however, is not characterized by being a saint, by perfections, angelic-like behavior, or always doing the right thing. We definitely are a bunch of hypocrites. But it's precisely because we know that that we come to church to worship. We all struggle with self-defined labels, such as the tax collector who knows he is broken in his approach to God, versus the Pharisee who thanks God that he's not just like that tax collector. When we think of days in our lives in which we act like the Pharisee who gets our self-image all puffed up and therefore skew, we look at the place in the world with at the place in this world with less than saint eyes. Author Anne Lamott once wrote about 
false humility and viewing, uh, and viewing her own brokenness. She says, some days, the only thing that can cheer me up is something bad happening to somebody I hate. Preferably if it went viral and it showed the person with hair loss. She says, my heart still leaps to see this. Well, this sometimes speaks to an outlook we develop when we lose a sense of self, a sense of our own humanity, a sense of God's love for every child on this earth. There once was a New Yorker cartoon that showed one dog speaking to another dog. The one dog says to the other, it's not enough that we succeed. The cats must fail. This is the human condition that we are often caught up with in our living. That even in the face of death, we as dogs believe that those cats must be destroyed. Not a rare perspective as we get ready to have an election in our country this week. Having humility means owning our own brokenness. It means trying to live out this grace. It means putting aside our personal arrogance forgiving the unforgivable, or at least striving to do that, and seeking and giving and receiving apologies. It also means having humility when we have messed up or fallen short, especially with other people. C.S. Lewis once said, We don't have souls. We are souls. We just have bodies. It is a way of looking at the world and each other in a different way. It is like seeing through the lens of life differently. Hopefully this set of gospel glasses equips us and drives us to see our worth from God's perspective and not a fabricated human one. It sometimes is about putting aside our own bravado, who like the Pharisee is trying to stack up his points and prove his worth, not only to those around him in society, but when he gets honest enough with himself, trying to prove his own worth, even to God. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Amen.
let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Holy One, your church rests on the faithful who came before us. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders the will to carry the church forward and discern your will for the future. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, the earth is yours and all that dwells within it. Care for places ravaged by natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you raise up leaders to guide your people. Kindle on them a passion to care for others, a desire to seek the common good, and the courage to love their enemies. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, you bless those who are poor, hungry, and reviled. Provide food, housing, and security to all who are vulnerable or in crisis. May those who have more than enough give generously. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, hold us in community with one another. Nurture a spirit of abundant hospitality and intentional inclusion among us, welcoming the gifts of adults and children. Inspire creative visions for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Holy One, we remember those in thanksgiving who have died. Especially this day, we remember those members of Christ the Redeemer Lutheran Church that have died since last All Saints Sunday. Diane Happel. Lois Sullivan. Walt Meyer. Wipe away our tears and comfort us with the promise of everlasting life in you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God.